Perdita, so wonderful. Uh, how are you doing, my friend? How's it going? I I was going well. Wait, where are you? Where are you? Where are you right now? Okay, my dear, I'm in North York, so probably very close to you. <laughs> you're you're so close to me. This is this is a treat. I know, I know. I'm very excited to talk to you. I have to tell you. So first of all, hey. let's just get started. How are you doing? How's your family? How have you guys been holding up in the pandemic, especially that you're a mom and you're an athlete? So how has that been for you? Yeah, sometimes I feel like I'm going to go a little loopy because, you know, we're, we're home a lot. And, you know, I have a 16 month old who wants to run around and do everything. So, um, you know, that's been difficult. But I feel like, um, I, we've been able to slow down and reset. And I don't know if you feel this way either, but I've been grateful for that. Like you realize certain things aren't as important, right? And you can just kind of focus on what, what really is important. Oh, you're absolutely 100% right about that. It really, and I don't know about you, but like, have you started cooking more or baking and stuff like that? <laughs> sure have. I, I have <laughs> done a lot of experimenting with recipes. I have, I have. I've gained good girl, too. good girl. Okay, excellent. <laughs> good to hear. Well, listen, yeah. congratulations on the new season of All Round Champion. Uh, this is such a great show, also because it's so inspiring for for kids, for young athletes, for for people who are like, mm, I'm not sure. Do I really want to try this? Like, you know, I want to go into sports for. So, just uh, for for people who are just not familiar with the show, tell us about All Round Champion and what's new for season two. So All Round Champion is a show where we take 10 elite athletes. They're anywhere from age 12 to around 16. And they're amazing at what they do. They're elite. They're from all across North America. Five uh, females, five males. And so the premise of the show is they're not competing in their sport. They're going to be competing in each other's. And they don't have a lot of time to do it. They have three days to master that new, new sport. And on the fourth day, they compete in it. So the person whose sport it is, they become the coach. So they step back and they guide their fellow athletes through it. A treat for them is we bring in a, a megastar, a sport mentor, you know, Olympian, a, you know, an X Games champion to help coach alongside them. The athlete who's coaching doesn't know who that is. And a lot of times it's someone that they've idolized and they've really looked up to. And so it makes it really, really special for them. And so at the end of our 10 weeks together, only one of them can have the crown of all round champion. Uh, but those two weeks are packed with drama and, uh, and just a lot of fun. Oh, I'm just, I can just imagine. And I'm wondering for you, like to watch these young athletes do what they're doing and just even try to experience a new sport, you know, whatever. Does it, did it make you kind of think back of when you were a little younger, when you kind of started and then Look at you, like Olympic champion. I mean, I can't even tell you how proud we are of you as, as Canadians. So I just have to get that in there. But, you know, did it make you think back like, wow, I was there, you know? You know what? When I, the 10 of them, I feel like, you know, it's my job to be really honest with them and transparent, right? And at times I do want to kind of cuddle them and, and you know, baby them. I don't even know if that's the the perfect word. I want to keep them safe and like, no, 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 it's okay. But I realized that's not really doing them any kind of any good, right? Like, because sport will, you know, really, really kind of show who you are, right? And there are times where they're so good at what they do, they don't know how to be not good at something else. And that frustrates them. And so I've had to tell them that, look, I've had the highest highs, I've had the lowest lows, you got to find a way to keep going. It is easy to go keep going when you have a gold medal, when you have a championship, when you've done what you're supposed to. It's harder when you can't master a thing or it's harder when your body's like, I'm not doing this. I'm not listening to you today, which can and does happen. And because I've had this 10 year, 12 year career as one of the best in the world, I've experienced everything, the salty and the sweet. They haven't yet. Right. And so they have to really check their egos at the door, which I don't know. I remember being 13 and 14. That's not always easy to do. I know everything. What do you know? Right. And so they really have to figure out why they're there, why they want to do this thing, why they really have signed up. And if you're, if you signed up just to look good all the time, guess what? You won't always, the camera doesn't lie. And so it really is my job to, um, to really guide them through the hard days, the breakdowns, but really also the triumphant moments and, uh, and show them that sport reflects life. So if you can't hack it here, you're going to have a really tough time, you know, outside of these, uh, this all round champion world. 
Yeah, absolutely. And I want to ask you too, like if you were thrown into a sport and they said, you know, Perdita, you got to try so-and-so, something you'd never done. What would be the one that you, you would kind of want to tackle? I've been saying I would want to tackle figure skating because let me brag a little bit. I think I'd have wonderful jumps, right? Because hurdler scale. So I think I'd have hops all day. The one I would not want to try is mogul skiing. I've never skied. They throw me on some shoe skis in this program. I crash and burn and I fall flat on my face. But I think the kids see me get up and try and to me i think that goes farther than me saying i'm the host i'm not trying i'm not gonna look stupid on camera oh no i get right up in there and let me tell you i love heat i love sun i love summer i'm out of my element in the cold and you will see you will see <laughs> i hear you i know listen living in canada i ugh, yuck I, I i'm not i'm not looking forward to the cold weather either i really want before we go i want to quickly ask you you just um released a new book my goodness this is fantastic tell me just very quickly about that book and and what inspired you to to sit down and write that what, what a great tribute to uh to your mom yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, my book is called My Mother's Daughter, and it was supposed to come out in April of 2020. But because of COVID, we've just pushed it to 2021. And it is really a love letter to my mother. Um, there's a lot of things in my young life uh, that I didn't talk about as an athlete, you know, being homeless, you know, poverty, those sorts of things. And I'm ready to talk about it now. I'm ready to say, you know, this is what I had to face as a person. And these are the hurdles my mother and I had to get over to get me to an Olympic start line, to get me to a world championship start line. And so I tell her immigration story, which was really, really difficult. And I also tell my story and I weave that through sport. And in it, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of struggles, but there's a lot of triumphs. So when you see me as the athlete, I think you'll understand me a lot more. Amazing. Wow. Good on you. Wow. You're just such an inspiration. And lastly, I just want to say, what would you say to, to kids who are thinking about maybe wanting to be athletes or, or just anything? Like what, what's your advice to, to them to just keep going? Oh, I love that question. So when I see our cast, like I said, they're, they're, they're young teens, right? I see me in them a lot, a lot, a lot. And I feel like I'm living kind of my old sport life through them. And regardless of it, if you want to be an aspiring Olympian or athlete or whatever it is, the truth is, I would say, you have to define success for yourself. What will make you successful? What is success to you? It can't be the medals. It can't be the number of likes on an Instagram post. It can't be fame, right? It has to be something intrinsic and internal that you can judge yourself by. And so I used to be always obsessed with, well, did I run fast? Okay, did I, did I be beat this person? Or well, what is she doing? It doesn't matter. You define success for you and you keep going regardless of what anybody else says, it doesn't matter. That's what I would say to my young self and that's what I would say to, to young kids today. Amazing. Thank you so much for that advice. It's, I'm sure a lot of people will listen to that. And, and just, just a thrill and honor and privilege for me to talk to my fellow Torontonian. You're, you're like I say, such an inspiration and um, uh, just best of luck with, to you. And, and hopefully, you know, after pandemic, maybe we can, we can meet up and have a coffee or something. I'd love that. That'd be great. <laughs> That'd be excellent for sure. Thank you so much. Okay. I'm holding you to that. And you can bake me something. How about that? There you go. There we go. I like okay. that. Okay, good so stuff. Thank you for your time, Perdita. Best of luck with the show and your book and everything. And uh, just stay healthy and stay safe. I will. You too. It was great talking to you. You too. Take care. Bye-bye. Okay,